Welcome to Ferros Technology. Today we've got an exciting video about sub procedures and functions. It is a fairly lengthy one, but stay all the way to the end because I give good data all the way through. So let's get started. So we'll start by looking at creating a module. So let's create a module that goes with this. When we click on that, we'll see the Visual Basic for Applications come up. We see module one already pre-named for us. That's kind of like doc one if you're using Word. So our palette over here where we start writing the code uh, is the code window and to the left, of course, is the project window. And so we're gonna write sub square it. So we've given it a name called square it. And in that sub, we're just going to dimension a variable first. And we're gonna call that variable L number for long number. So we're gonna dimension that one as a long integer in this case. And then we're gonna say L number equals two. Simple. And now we're going to pass a formula to a message box. So we'll type message box. And then the, the prompt, we're gonna take L number and concatenate it with squared is and concatenate that with L number with the caret two, which is squaring it. And that's the end of our subroutine. So we're just taking L number, giving it a two and passing the result of our formula back to a message box, okay? Like I said, it performs a task. Subroutines perform tasks where functions actually do math and return a value, okay? So you could see that our message box returned a four. And now we're going to go ahead and save it. It'll ask us what name we want to give the module, just like Word asks us when we save it for the first time. So I'm going to save it as mod math functions. We're going to click the OK, and we have our first module. And you see it over there in the project section. So let's get into some detail concerning what it is about subroutines and functions so that you can know exactly how to write each one. In our squared example, we created a standard module. The other type of module you can create is called a class module. Standard modules are independent from other access objects like forms and reports. Standard modules store code that is used anywhere in your application. They are stored in the modules section of the navigation pane. Form and report modules, also referred to as class modules, are attached to their hosts and are accessed through the form property sheet or the report property sheet. They are created automatically by access whenever you add VBA code to the form or report. The area above the first procedure in the module is called the declaration section. The declaration section is used to store options and variables that will apply to every procedure in the module. Two common options are option compare database and option explicit. Option compare database determines how two strings are compared to each other and directs VBA to use the same comparison method as the database uses. Option explicit directs VBA to warn you if you have an undeclared variable. By setting this option, you're telling VBA that you intend to explicitly declare any variable that you'll use, which is just always a good practice. Everything below the declaration section is known as the procedure section or code section. This section contains the sub procedures and functions of a module. The sub procedure or sub or subroutine is the simplest type of procedure in a VBA project. A sub procedure is nothing more than a container for VBA statements that typically perform a task such as opening a form, report, or running a query. Sub procedures have two required statements, sub and then the procedure name, and end sub. If those two were the only two statements you had, it'd be a valid procedure, but it'd be rather boring because it wouldn't do anything. In our example, the procedure started with sub square it. The procedure ends with end sub. When determining the name of your procedure, there's a few rules you have to follow. The most important rules to remember is that the name must begin with a letter, cannot contain most punctuation, and can't be more than 255 characters long. All those rules aside, you should pick your names for your procedures that describe what they do in a way that will be obvious to you when you read them later. Procedure names like get data will likely be hard to understand later, but read data from employee table would be crystal clear. 
You probably don't want to push the 255 character limit. That's kind of long. But don't be afraid to make them descriptive. The first statement in our simple procedure is a variable declaration statement. It starts with the dim keyword, which is short for dimension. The variable's name, L number, comes next. Variable names follow the same rules as procedure names. The as keyword follows the name, which is followed by the data type. In this case, L number was declared as a long integer type. When you declare a variable with the dim keyword, you're telling VBA to reserve a spot in the computer's memory to store that data. In this case, we told VBA to hold enough memory to store a long integer or 32 bits of memory. The as data type portion of the declaration statement is optional. You could declare L number with the statement dim L number. When you omit the data type, VBA will determine an appropriate data type when you assign the first value to the variable. But that's not a very good practice. VBA will assign a data type to the variable based on the first time you use it, but it doesn't know all the plans you have in mind for that variable. It may end up assigning a data type that's too small. The next line in the procedure stores the number 2 in the variable L number. L number equals 2. There are really only two things you need to remember here. You must assign a value that is appropriate for the variable's data type. In this case, you're storing a number without a decimal in a variable declared as long. If you tried to store data that isn't appropriate for the data type, VBA would do its best to convert the value into the dimensioned data type. If you tried to store the value 8.26, for example, in a long variable, VBA would convert it to 8 by simply truncating the number off and removing the decimals. If VBA were unable to convert the data, you'd get an error. The variable name goes on the left of the equal sign and the value goes on the right. Everything on the right of the equal sign is evaluated before it's assigned to the variable. So in our example, we only assigned it a 2. But if we assigned a formula, it would evaluate the formula first and then assign it to the variable name. We then have the final statement before the end. Message box, L number, ampersand, squared is, and L number squared. Sending the formula value of L number squared to a message box for the user. Now that we've taken a good look at subroutines, let's go take a look at how functions work. So we're going to go to a, a form that I made real quick and look at design view real quick here. Now, it's just three unbound text boxes. Those text boxes obviously are just there for demo purposes. But I named the first one height. I named the second one width. And then the third one is going to be named area. Now, I did that because it just very simple variables and they're very descriptive of what is on the screen. So I want the user to put a height and then a width. Now, the button then goes and uses an event, an event procedure. Now, I'm going to end up creating a class module. So when I click on that ellipsis, I can then create a module. It'll put private sub command click and end sub in there. And I write that center piece of code in there, passing height. Me.height means it's going to pass the value of the first text box. Me.width passes the value of the second box and then sends those two values to square feet, the function. The function then returns the value assigned to square feet, and then that gets assigned to me, exclamation point, area. And you'll see our mod math functions that we created in the first thing when I showed square it. And uh, we're going to put our function right here in this same module with math functions. I think that makes sense. So we'll start our function by creating a function and dimensioning it. Square feet is a double, and height is as a double, and width as a double. Now I put the letter D in front, just like I did with L number, being a long integer, D for double. Now we went, want to start putting in the information that we want the users to, to work with, and we want also the programmer to work with too. So the next statement I'm going to put in here is going to be a message to the developers afterwards. And when I hit enter, it notice that it turns green because I've put an apostrophe at the beginning of that line. Now comes the actual formula. See what this function does is I pass it a 
height and I pass it a width. It's expecting two numbers. And once that happens, then it, I have then gone down to this statement and multiplied those two together. Heights times width equals the square feet. Now, square feet is dimensioned as a double and it gets passed back to the program. So let's go see how it works, okay? So let's go ahead and put this in form view. And putting it in form view, we're gonna put in two values here. Let's put in 25 here and let's put in 30 here. And then when we click the button, what's the area? Boom, it comes back with filling in the value for area as 750 in from the event procedure for that unbound text box. So you see the difference between subroutines and functions or subroutines are self-contained. They perform actions. All we could do with a subroutine was send a message box to their, to the user showing that we computed two squared. The function, on the other hand, we were able to pass two values and have those values actually brought forward and posted into an unbound text box. So functions perform those math things. They can perform um, comparisons on strings and pick the highest or lowest or, or whatever information that you want them to do. And we'll show you lots of examples in upcoming videos of how to do that. But most of all, functions return values, subroutines perform tasks. So if you gain something out of this video, please hit the subscribe button and hit that like button to send it out to other folks and hope to see you again in another video. Talk to you later.